now? Yeah, we're good. Oh, okay. <clears throat> episode 10. Bet. Welcome back to episode 10. Mink and Bio. Wait, fucked it up already. Mink and Bio. No, no. Welcome back to episode 10 of episode 22, Link and Bio. And today's guest is Marco 4D. You hear me? That's me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So check it out. So what you got to do is grab that little snappy thingy. Oh, okay. Look at that camera. Okay. Feel free to name this title. Coolest motherfucker in the world. Yes, sir. Hey. <laughs> How you been, man? I've been good, man. Yeah, I've been, first I've been Friday? great. I've been glowing. First Friday was beautiful. Yeah. You know I heard you host it. I did. I did. I destroyed my voice nice. right before an eight hour studio session. So nice. that was not smart, but we yeah. got through it. <laughs> but, but the whole experience, how was the crowd and the people? It was awesome, man. I mean, FTC is always a great crowd because at this point, it's like a community of its own. You know what I'm saying? But this last one was different, bro. Like, we had, like, me, Lurk, and a couple other people, like, holding the barricades back. Yeah. People were pushing them like crazy. Like, so intense. The energy was on 11, for oh, sure. Especially with the with the band, uh, the last band, Napal? Napalm? Napalm? Bro, Napalm. these girls literally be, like, flailing over the barricades. Like, I love you. Like, it's crazy. Over fruit and cannon food. Yeah, they, a little fucking oatmeal pies and cannon shit. food, bro. <laughs> Yeah. On stage. On stage. Just, and everyone motherfuckers like, ah. And a pineapple. That's how you know you got real fans. They yeah. don't give a fuck about what you're yeah. giving them. They're just like, oh, this came from that guy's hands. Yeah. Like, yeah. And at the end of the day, he had a, what's it called? <coughs> that, uh, I don't know what kind of snack it is. It, it was like oatmeal pies or yeah, some shit pies, like that. Like a 10 pack. Oatmeal pies. Yeah. Bro, as, soon as, they, as soon as he opened that. <laughs> they went crazy. crazy. Like the, the fence was coming in. They were like, yo, I want that. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah, that was never, never seen that happen before. They have a bright future, bro. They Napalm do. stars, like they got something going on for them for sure. No, nah, I mean, for real. Yeah, that would be dope. I don't know if they've really done any like podcasts or interviews or anything like that yet. I mean, they did one with be for the culture. Yeah, with for the culture. Yep, you're right. They did, they did do that. Yep, but the whole band. Ooh. Ooh, that'd be nice. That would be nice. That would be nice. Anyways, how we met. Shit, you know, it was uh, behind the dive bar. Right. I had a rusty dagger. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And that dude was trying to fight you. No, I'm just right, right, but right. And, he <laughs> me, and that's how we met. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, but uh, I met you through uh, Union House. You were, I don't remember if you were already in the red room when we got the other room. I think we're in the process of it. We, we, we like, pretty much got there at the same time, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we, you know, we had thrown events at Union House before and stuff before the culture. And then eventually Paul and Numskull made that move to, like, get that uh, yeah, that nice. unit. And then you guys did, too. You and uh, Huff. Yeah. And we met you guys. We were just chilling in the alley, I think, smoking cigarettes yeah, and shit. I think Rex was there. Yeah. And that's where we officially met through Rex. Yep, yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah, because y'all did the thing with uh, Izzy. Yeah. Yep. So, fucking met you guys then. And I was like, oh, I see my pretty cool dudes. I was like, I don't really know any videographers yet. And right. Boom. Here we are. <laughs> and, then, and then you and Huff did that first music video. Uh, yeah, some rappy shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one take at you in the house. Love it. Easy, simple. You guys did yeah. fucking killed it. It was dope. That was that that came purely out of just excitement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I showed brother the song. And he was like, bro, let's just do a video right now. I was yeah. like, all right, fuck I it. <laughs> Bet. And then, uh, it ends out in the street, yeah, where I'm, like, going through the union house. And you were there for that. Wow. Really? Look at that. I think so, yeah. Wow. I was, I was there. I was, I was helping help out just a little bit. Like, kind of, like, just helping. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I forgot about small that. World. Like, That's wow. crazy. That's crazy how well, like, <laughs> yeah. connecting in a way. <laughs> Not for you know real. I mean? That's intense. Small city, man. Smaller is, than you would is. think. It's definitely. So, as a rapper, how's it coming along? It's coming great, man. Yeah. Honestly. You know, like... Of course, everybody thinks, you know, when they start, like, writing in the back of class at, like, 16, 17, I was like, yep, I'm going to be the next 17, 18-year-old. Didn't work out that way. No. But <laughs> but shit's going great, man. Like, you know, I've I've been across the country at this point performing for, like, mm -hmm. packed rooms. You know, we're doing Strong Music Fest with Lurk in April. You know, that's, like, nice. our first festival ever, so that's super dope. Um, I've been making beats like crazy, selling beats like crazy. So it's, it's honestly been great, man. I've just been... Focusing on trying to evolve everything, every oh, chance that yeah, I get. Yeah, let the people know that what's your Instagram going to get those beats and shit. Yes, real Marco 4 d on Twitter, Instagram, fucking Pinterest, everything, okay? It's everywhere. Real Marco 4 d uh, And I, I'm really generous, too, bro. Like, I'm starting to realize, like, like I'll charge people, like, 100 for an exclusive, stems and everything. Like, nice. $100 and it's done. That beat is complete yours. And everybody I talk to is like, motherfucker, are you crazy? <laughs> like, I mean, you, yeah. you, you charging that cheap? But I'm like... 
you know, like my biggest thing is like I do obviously want the money from it, but I just want to hear some like really talented folks on my beats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there's some good rappers and then there's great rappers. Right. And, and I'd like to get great rappers on my that, shit. If that great rapper grabs that track and they make it and Ooh. then it's all connected to you at the end of the day, oh man, that's exactly. a win win right there. Yeah. Producing to me is like, you know, it's it's planting seeds. Uh -huh. You know, you're just planting seeds everywhere and just waiting for yeah. one to sprout somewhere, you know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's what my thought about uh, doing collaboration stuff. Yeah. Keep, you gotta keep doing them, but one of them gotta blow up. Yeah. I don't know who it is, but we yeah. keep on doing it. As long yeah, as the music's good, at least. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, How do you feel about the music scene in Vegas? Um, The music scene in Vegas, I, I had a really interesting discussion about this with some, with some homies uh, not too long ago. And, you know, we do have a scene, for right. sure. It is really dope. But then there's moments like the strong music pop up where you realize that there's people that you've never seen in any of the scene places mm -hmm. that are pulling out more people in the crowd than some of the biggest people in the scene. You know what I'm saying? So it's like there is a scene, but how much of a scene is it and how much of a caricature is it for real? You know, because everybody can say that they work hard and everybody can do this, but not everybody really does. And that's not something people want to hear. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I've been at fault of that too. You know, the first year or two that I was doing this shit, it was like, it was really a discovery phase. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I didn't know what trajectory I was going to take. But I think that, you know, the Vegas music scene, the people inside of it, um, I, I hear this notion from a lot of people that like, you know, money makes things easier, but it's not a necessity. And it's like, bro, that's the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised how many people share that same mentality, you know? And it's like, you know, I was having a discussion with somebody like, yeah, we could like get people to come from the strip here. Blah, blah. I'm like, bro, we're trying to get on the strip. Yeah. We want the strip to fuck with us. Yeah. The strip, it will never need to fuck with us. No, no, no. They never going to happen. Ever. It's the other way around. You gotta hop on their 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 platform and like, yo, this is what this is what I can provide. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing too, is like I feel like people in general don't understand the value proposition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to come with something of value to yeah. gain something you of value. Pop up and be you like, can't yo, just hey. exist. You know, like there's one in a trillion people that will blow people's minds so fucking hard mm -hmm. that they're gonna here, just take this, take that, take this. Nine times out of ten, me, myself, you're not that fucking person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's very rare. Yeah. So, you know, like, I, I have a lot of hope for the Vegas music scene. I think it's going to take a lot of people, like, changing their mentalities and a lot of people willing to be uncomfortable, bro. Yeah. Like, I slept in my car for, like, months. Oh. And at the same time, I was dra dropping 1500 on promotion for shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. For myself and that. other folks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like... Was that comfortable? No, I hated oh, that shit. Did, it was though. very cold. But it's like, you know, you got to do what the fuck you got to do. And I knew, all right, is this going to kill me? Is this going to be the end of my life here? No? All right, then be uncomfortable for a couple months to right. meet uh, this goal that you when set. When you did that promotion thing, did it really help out at the end of it? Like the results you were aiming for? Did you get that? Absolutely, and, man. Uh, um, what's the platform you did to promote? Shout out King Wow on Twitter. King Wow, you're a fucking solid dude. Like for real, he's he's a really good dude. He, um, he has like over 100,000 followers at this point on Twitter, and he just built a huge community. He He's a large part of what people consider hip-hop Twitter. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And like he just built his community by just discussing music with people, and people are interested in what he has to say about it. So I hit him up. I was like, bro, do you do promotion? He listened to the song. He liked it. He was like, here's my rate. We went through with it. Bro, the first week, we I did that for the Saturday's Sad Art uh -huh. album, and that shit got like 12,000 album streams in the first week. Off of that promotion. No shit. All organic. Like, people, like, I, bro, I was getting, like, paragraphs of text from people in Japanese through oh, Twitter. Whoa. Like, oh, I love this so much. Blah, blah, blah. Like, shit was blowing my mind. And that's when I realized, bro, like, if you're not willing to drop stupid money on this shit, yeah. you just go get a job. You know what I'm saying? That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Just go get a job and hang it up if you're not willing to fucking spend everything on this. You know? But that's good. I'm glad that you got you the results that you were looking for mm -hmm. doing that because I'm pretty sure that was a big investment in that. Definitely. It changed my, my perspective too. You know, I was like, okay, this shit is a lot more tangible than people think. It just costs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Costs. And then you have some fans too uh, from that and then they actually like yeah. hitting you up, talking to you. Yeah, I have a kid that sends me beats every week, bro. No shit. Ever since that. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, every week in my email is a new pack of beats. It's pretty nuts. Like, that shit will really get you some devoted fans. Because these are people that are already interested in dissecting and talking about music uh -huh. with people. And that I felt like that especially helped me because my music is very cerebral. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like there's a lot of surface level there. If you want, just want the surface level, it's there. If you look deeper, you're like, oh, this motherfucker's sick in the head. You know what I'm oh, saying? Dude, like, my, freaking, uh, my favorite one's a sip another or another sip. Another sip, dude, exactly. I love that. Yeah. Okay, that Thank, you, man. Thank you. Thank you. That's like, what a sip. 
Bro, it's funny too because yeah. I didn't like that song at all when I made it, bro. Oh no shit! I made that song and I was like, man, this shit sucks. <laughs> so I guess I'll just put it out. Fuck it. Yeah. And it ended up being one of my most more stream songs out of any of my songs, bro. So yeah. it's like it's one of those funny things you hear artists talk about all the time. Like the shit that I like is not the shit that everybody else right. likes for me, you know. But, but you kept pumping them out. That's yeah, what matters. Because like yep. I said, if you don't like it, but someone else will. Exactly. Like, exactly. Like, All right. If you like it, fuck it. I like it too. Most definitely. Yeah, that's insane, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, do you think Florida culture will be the scene? Bro, I you think know, it would. bro, it's, it, I, let me be careful. <laughs> but, bro, I think in large part, it is already a part of the heartbeat of the scene, yeah. bro. I think if FTC was gone tomorrow, it would leave a pretty sizable crater. Oh, 1,000. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's tons of people really doing their thing. But another thing is, like, you know, FTC has been going almost four years at this point. Strong, too. A lot of shit doesn't make it out of its first year, yeah. let alone its second. To be on its fourth, that's fucking crazy, you know? The momentum's getting there. Like, I, I truly honestly believe it could escalate into being, like, the next Coachella level oh, event one day. Too. I really yeah. do believe that. Soon, too. 100%. Imagine, no bro, going to Coachella, bro. Oh, God, that'd be intense. I could see it, man. If it, it feels very real to me, it doesn't feel like a lofty goal. You know, it feels like a natural progression in my head. Right. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Hold on, I'm crying real quick. <laughs> dude, that dude, like, I just love it, man. Because once I got that, they were like putting in this, putting in there, trying to grab some shows, and then coming in slow and growing over time, over time. Hell yeah, but dude. We were on vacation for like what five months. Yeah. And then yep. the first month, the first Friday, it's packed. Right back. Like it never. Right back. And as an official first Friday event, oh, bro. That's yes. fucking... Pff, that's dope. That's dope. That brought a tear to my eye, man. Dude, dude. <laughs> Real shit. Crunchy inside, too, about that. <laughs> man. Oh, can't wait to next month. Yeah. Yeah, next oh, month's going to be nuts. I, I think I'm performing next month. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. All new music, too. Brand new and stuff. you hosting, too, or what? No. Oh. Last time, bro, New Year's, I performed and hosted. It's too much work? I, bro, I couldn't even, my voice wasn't even, like, I couldn't even do my set, bro. Like, Damn. my voice was fucked. Because I, I just get too carried away with it, bro. Everybody gets all excited yeah. in the crowd, like, ah! Yeah, so <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I feel it, I feel it. That's cool. That's great. Looking great. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, uh, any Picasso. EPs? <laughs> any EPs coming out? Um, yeah, so... <clears throat> I'm working on something with Ben Giles right now. Uh -huh. No tentative date on it because it just has to be perfect. You know okay. what I'm saying? It has to be right. But yeah, it's going to really be a great editor, that yeah, guy. man. Ben, shout out Ben Giles. Damn. Good guy. Southern Thunder. Can't compete. Fucking. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so we're work I'm working with him on that. It's going to be like a almost like a short movie for uh -huh. a whole EP, three four song EP. Oh shit. Um, so there's that, but then leading up to that and just in general, I'm going to start dropping a lot more music again. Like you said, you know, that one period of time I was pumping shit out Yeah. and it's just time, it's time to get back to that. You know, it's time to like, you know, I made a lot of music that I thought would do well. And I'm lately I'm just, I'm, I'm making whatever the fuck I feel like and nice. however anybody feels like it, we'll see. But Ooh. that's, you know, that's start no singing. longer my concern, you know? No. Yeah. Singing. There's a lot more singing what? stuff Seriously? and melodies. Yeah, bro. Nice. Like I've gotten to a place where it's like, you know. People are going to feel how they're going to feel. Uh -huh. You know, it's like anything else in life. You can't force an emotion out of somebody. You can't force anything. All I can do is project my truest self, and uh -huh. whoever relates to that will attach to it. Nice. You know, and, like, that, I feel like that's better in the long run because if I'm just getting people to fuck with me based off of what I think they want, as soon as I start doing what I want, they don't, they're don't. they not interested anymore because they weren't there for, there for that in the first place. You know, huh. so. I, I can't wait to see that. I yeah. hear you sing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let me yes, get a acapella real quick. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. Um, as an artist, do you think there's any uh, advice you give to any upcoming rappers or singers or anyone in general? Yeah, man. Want to pursue that path? First biggest thing, I was talking to a kid on TikTok about this. He was like, "Yo, like." My parents are trying to make me get a job, but I'm getting hella streams on my music and it's going well. Like, I think that's just going to slow me down. If you're not like selling drugs or like come from a family where money just rains on you, right. go get a job and just do that shit. And yeah, you're going to hate it because that's not what you're feeling like you're meant to be doing. But without that shit, you can't do what you're meant to be doing. You know, right. I definitely struggled with that for a minute. Like the whole pride and ego thing of like, oh, I'm not working for somebody, boo, boo, boo. All that ever did was slow me down. So if you're an artist out there and you're trying to get shit shaken, get a goddamn job and use that money wisely, you know, because uh -huh. that, that that really is I, – I go back to that point because that's the biggest thing, man. Money is the biggest thing. You know, yeah, you can – you could buy a career in this shit, you know, but it's it's doing that plus really being good that mm. gives you staying power. 
know what I'm saying? But you can't you can't get nowhere without money unless you're in the the right room at the right time with the right person saying the right shit. Yeah. And that's all chance. And I don't like to leave shit up to chance, you know. Yeah, you must just put it put in your own work and then when that opportunity comes, it comes out of you. At the exactly. End of the day. Or you fucking you know, like like with the King Wild shit, like uh-huh. I know like J. Cole follows him. Like Kanye, pretty sure, follows him. Like a lot of people follow him, like from the music industry. Yeah. So you fucking pay a little 250, 350 to put your song up there. It's a really honest chance that J. Cole is going to listen to your music, that Ye could listen to your music, that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's just finding the avenues, okay. you know what I'm saying? Finding the doors into that next corridor, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Dude, that's really touching. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like yes, that. Sir, that was yes, really sir. good. That was really good. Great advice. That's Thank way you. better than Thank you. my advice and stuff. <laughs> You've given me some great advice, Cersei. No way. <laughs> the social media shit, yo. Oh. If you need to get your social media <laughs> right, talk to this man. He he understands. Yeah, we Link in bio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do that story today. Like, whoa, he did it today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did they ask any questions yet or what? I don't think I got any questions yet. I probably should have done that last night to be a hundred thousand with you. Yeah, but they did it though. Yeah, but you know, you know, we'll make an amendum. Do nice. you have any questions? No. Oh, I got tons of questions. Oh, you want to take over? You want to take over real quick? <laughs> I never shut up. Oh, you want me to take over real quick? Oh, yeah. What? Let's yeah, do it. Let's do it, do it. Do it my guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hot seat. Hot seat. Hot seat. Hot seat. All right. I'm, I'm in my robe and shit. Oh, okay. Comfy, cozy, man. Ah, That's the way to be. All right, comfy, cozy. Man. <laughs> so it's crazy, man. This is like the first time that you and I have ever met formally. Yeah. But yeah. we run in very similar circles in the culture. We got lots of mutual friends, man. Mm-hmm. I've been listening to your music. I fuck Appreciate with your that. music. Thank you, man. Thank you for putting <laughs> it on for the culture. Absolutely. Right? And uh, so, but there's a lot that I don't know about you. Like, so how long ha- have you say, like, when did you start? in the game and then when uh and then relative to that when do you think you became serious about it i would say so i really started it was a friend of mine he goes by filthy nate he still drops music to this day he's really filthy nate yeah he's he's a great artist (laughs) and um you know i was that was like my best buddy in middle school and everything you know i'd be at his house every fucking night and one night you know he started rapping and everything one night i'm fucking playing the xbox he's like bro you want to put a verse on this and, you know, I've always been a writer. I've always written. Like, I, I was a weird little kid. Like, I wasn't outside with motherfuckers. With, like, nah, I'm writing books. <laughs> you know what okay, I'm saying? Okay, okay. But um, when he when he like proposed that. that to me, I was like, all right, fuck it. I'll try it. And as soon as I heard it back for the first time, I was like, yeah, I'm supposed to be doing something like this. This you, makes sense. You were feeling yourself. Like, yeah. That. Like, nice. it was, it's, it's an unparalleled feeling. Like, I can only imagine that's what... That's the feeling that anyone feels when they find that thing, you right, know? Right, And, um, yeah, it was, it was a couple... I would say like a year and a half of just, you know, not paying attention to class anymore and just writing lyrics all day. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then after high school, there was, it was, oh God, Magfort. Magfort. I don't Magfort. know if you remember that. They were uh, an event company out here. I think uh, Ashton from uh, IPMG had something okay. to do with them because he was on the judge panel for this event. But basically they're bringing out Ski Master Slump God. And they were holding an open audition for the opener. Like, you don't have to pay none of that shit. Like, whoever gets the best reaction here gets to oh, go wow. perform. Right. And I was like, okay, that's like a rare thing from what I understand. That's an that opportunity. Still, exactly. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I knew little about the game, but I knew that opportunities like that were far and few in between. You know, so I was like, I've never even held a microphone before, but fuck it. Let's do it. Went there. Did wow. terrible. Wow. Did terrible. I'm tripping over the speaker. I'm wow. fucking, you know, but it was like, it was a great way, I think, to like break myself into performing because I just forced myself, you know. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I mean, you don't hear that type of story. That's like a jump into the deep end. Yeah. Like never done it before, like spent the night at the Holiday Inn, but I, and so I got this. Yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah. hear that story much. One of the things that Circe and I are always chopping it up about is like, what is like, what is one of the recommendations you would give to somebody starting out, right? He asked you that question earlier. And confidence. Yeah. Right? It's key. It's key, right? But, like, when you've never done something before, right, we also talk about repetition, practice, mm-hmm. you know, learning, talking, networking, you know, so that you start learning the language and everything. But the confidence is something that generally builds up over time. Sounds like you came, like, in right away with all that confidence. You know, I have a funny theory that okay. it sounds funny, but I really think there's some weight to it. I feel like the way you are exposed to how to swim as a child okay. has a great deal of how you deal with 
conflict and things like that later on in life. Like, like literally how to swim. Yeah. Like, okay. like for me, like the way my dad saw me how to swim, I was like five years old or something. He said, all right, swim through my ass in the pool. Okay. You know? Okay. So it was okay. like, so, yeah. I feel like that kind of thing sticks with you. And so like, that's with everything that I do at this point. It's like, I don't want to ease in. I don't want to, I'm just going to do this shit. And if shit. I fail, that's yeah. okay. Cause I did it and I'll do it better next time. Okay. You know? So I didn't want to, Oh, maybe I'll try an open mic or maybe I was like, okay, I have a chance to open up for a big act. Let me take it. Fuck it. Right. You know, worst that happens is I don't get this one. I tried the next one. So you know? it's a fail forward approach. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and it's interesting because one of the things that, um, that we know about learning is that you actually learn more, like your brain actually learns more from failing mm -hmm. than you do from succeeding. And Absolutely. so, and there's, you know, there's so many interesting things that, um, uh, about like fear of success. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you'll find it out there, you know, people, people talk about fear of success. Like a lot of people don't, uh, don't want to succeed mm -hmm. because the success is scary. Yeah, man. Yeah. And man, I've, I've worked with a fair amount of people, you know, since taking this pretty seriously. And I've definitely run into that. You know, I've run into moments where it's like, all right, this is going good. We're going to work harder. Right. And then people just stop showing up and it's like, well, what the mm -hmm. fuck is going on? Like okay. we're getting really close. Start showing up more, you know? Right. And it's like, I don't, you know, I, for me, that's a hard thing to understand, but you know, I know like I was brought up definitely a lot different than a lot of people like in school, like a C was like, all right, everything's out of your room for like a month. Oh wow. Read some Shakespeare. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I grew up in a very like intensive, like succeed plus 10 household. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's yeah, like, yeah. for me being scared of success was never an option because I already knew what failure was like <laughs> and I you didn't are, want to keep okay. doing that you know so always but, chasing success though. yeah so it's like it's stuff like that it's, it's a little hard for me to wrap my head around yeah you know because it's like how could you be scared of doing great yeah but you know everybody has their things and everybody has different upbringings and experiences that bring them to different places in their heads so you know I don't knock anybody but it's like fuck that <laughs> I'm, right. I'm not scared of winning i'm ready <laughs> i mean we got one life to live right where yeah. it's kind of a yolo situation and yeah so, and, yeah right and uh no time no time you, yeah you're either uh doing it or or you die trying right 100 percent fail bro. trying right 100%. uh so middle school you you were playing xbox homie <laughs> asked you to jump on the track that's kind of a fun that's a fun origin story and then and then after you just jumped into the deep end, jump on yep. stage, tripping over over speaker <laughs> <laughs> speaker wires, yeah. uh, and then and so you would say that's when, you, yeah, you were like, I'm gonna do this. That was the moment when I was like, okay, like you are out in the world now. Somebody has heard your name and you said something on a microphone. It's oh, like okay. now it's time to keep going, like yeah. keep the momentum up. Don't let any that's failure beautiful. be the last yeah. failure. Let it be first in a series of many that leads to a success. Wow, man, you know? that's so important. I feel like for people to hear, like, mm -hmm. and it and it's uh, it's simple. What's that? It was cocky. They had to cut the audio. Oh yeah, you have to. <laughs> yeah, it's hard work over there, man. You gotta. Like this is so cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ten. Right. No, that's beautiful, bro. Like, yeah. I, I'm very happy to see how this is going, bro. Right. Tears of joy right now. My bad. Oh my God. <laughs> no, no, this is good. I mean, like, uh, ultimately, you know, uh, a lot of you know friends, uh, people that mess mess with us are, are watching this, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and initially, uh, if you go back to episode one, right, we're like, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we're just gonna get in there and do it. And yeah. like, I one of my biggest things is like, I like to bring value to the viewers. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you said earlier, mm -hmm. like you got to bring value to get value. Absolutely. Right. And, and really just, uh, in a lot of ways, bringing value is its own rewards. So mm -hmm. always searching for that value for the viewers, people tuning in and your story is so amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, you're talking about how your dad threw you in the deep end, you know, not everybody had that, Yeah. you know, that, that sort of, uh, would it, how's the way that you put it, but like, uh, the way you were taught to swim yeah. mentality, right? Like mm -hmm. literally the way you were taught to swim. Yeah. And, uh, thinking back, I'm not even sure the way that I was taught to <laughs> swim, but like, I wasn't even with my family. The people that taught me to swim were like the daycare people, mm. you know? So I was in like a YMCA type th situation, yeah. Yeah. you know, like, and, uh, and it was sort of more like fear of 
failure through like because everybody else either people already knew how to swim and i'm just right. a kid yeah right? you know so social like, pressure social pressure yeah. yeah 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 social pressure but uh anyways back back on track you're unpacking a lot of things that are really important for people to hear like uh i really i actually kind of want to go back to what you said earlier because this has actually been a reoccurring theme in some of our other interviews as well mm -hmm. and that's like your day job yeah Right. And you say, go get a job. Mm -hmm. Right. And one of the things, and we're always shouting out Benny digital cause he dropped some <laughs> gems, very Hell similar yeah. gems. Right. Um, he was saying you got to fund your dreams. Right. And Absolutely. so it's like, well, one of the things trying to quit the day job. Right. But you had the day job. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you were also saying some things like you were pushing forward, even though you were living out of your car. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that like there's a lot about chasing your dreams. Don't give up on your dreams, but also be realistic and get get your get your day job in order. Mm -hmm. right? Definitely. So that you it's can important. fund that stuff. Um, yeah, that's important for people to hear. Right. Yeah. Because because we're all struggling out there in different ways, especially financially, especially, yeah. especially right now. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right? That's craziness. Um, so here's an interesting question. Um, first, do you feel like you've quote unquote made it? Fuck no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, you know, honestly, I don't think I'll ever feel like I made it Okay. because there's always more to make. Okay. You know, like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. I've never felt complacent. Never in my life have I felt the emotion of, okay, I could just stay here. Like, never. I've always felt like I had to get more. And it's hard to imagine that that's going to change, you know? Because mm -hmm. even, you know, like when me, Lurk, and Zerby go out to Arizona or Florida or whatever, and we just do a dope show in front of 800 people, packed houses, the first thing is, all right, what's next? Yeah. You know, like, how are we going to keep this momentum up? You know, it's there's a J. Cole line where he, he talks about, um, oh, I can't remember the line exactly, but he talks about, like, uh, celebrating every first down is the slowest way to a touchdown. You know, and it's like you can't celebrate those moments in between you and your goal. You have to enjoy the journey, but you can't get swallowed in it Interesting. because the journey will become never ending. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you will get stuck in constantly celebrating little moments. And while you're celebrating those little moments, you're not using your brain power, your, your ingenuity, whatever it may be to get to that next little moment or big moment, you know? Interesting. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's important to stay focused and, and remember, like, the end of the day there's somebody that has more than you there's somebody that's doing more than you mm -hmm. and if you want to be at the top then that's can't be acceptable you have to keep going harder yeah you, know? you just go uh and especially when the chips are up mm -hmm. that's when you got to double down mm -hmm. and work harder right Definitely. success success is an indication of your opportunity mm -hmm. to work harder absolutely right? and uh same thing when the chips are down mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely definitely at, all the time man and you know like People, you know, it's it's very easy to get swallowed in your successes because, okay. you know, especially because when the struggle to that success is so tough, you mm. know, sometimes you just want to sit down and just just exhale and catch a moment. Yeah. But that, you know, it's, it's like keeping your adrenaline going. If you take that mm. second and take that moment, you're going to get back to that weakened, fragile state. Okay. I'd rather be just just fucking ape shit mode all yeah, the yeah. time. It drives you crazy for sure. Like, okay, I think there's it. a reason that some of the most successful people in any field of anything in history usually go fucking nuts. It's because you have sure, to become yeah, obsessive yeah. over the shit to really take it to that level. Okay. You know? Okay. And, and so, uh, and so you don't feel like you've made it quote unquote made it. Uh, what would, um, what would you say would be, uh, like, um, a milestone or like a primary objective for you and if you accomplish that how would you feel how do you think you would feel after that um man i think my biggest thing right now is just connecting more personally with people connecting you more know? personally with people okay, i think that's, that's yeah yeah i think that's like the biggest way to because you know I, I feel like if i wanted to just disappear up into the air tomorrow and have like a million plays or whatever i think i could do it bro a hundred percent. Yeah. Like I, I think if I just put the money in the right place and stayed at it, I could do it. Interesting. But I also think that while that is a quick way, it isn't the best way. Cause at the end of the day, what you want is longe longevity. Anybody mm. can get there. The hard part is keeping it, you know? So it's like, I, I, I've been focusing on like every time somebody follows me or DMs me, Hey, what's up? Like, what do you do? How did you find me? You know what Make I'm saying? Cause exactly. Make okay. people feel like you care about them, you know? Cause mm. it's easy to get like, if you're getting like 500 plays on a song or something, <laughs> you got, you got seriously tearing up over there. <laughs> <laughs> getting him in the feels. Yeah. In the beginning. 
Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Engage with the followers of the past. Okay. Yeah. 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 This man gives great advice. You know, I, a lot of so, stuff I've yeah. gotten from this man. But um, yeah, man, it's it's like connecting closely to people like that is is really important. Like you, your your consciousness is the hottest Ooh. commodity you have access to. You know, so when you give people the time of day to give them and lend them your consciousness, okay. people really take that shit to heart. Okay. Definitely. Okay. I like that. You don't hear too many people say that. So that's like, uh, when you say lend them your consciousness, is that like, uh, like being present, sharing yeah. ideas? Uh, yeah. Like really just, just being like, my real name is Marcus. If I'm going to hit you up in the DMs, I'm, I'm Marcus right now. My okay. page might say Marco, but right oh, okay. now I'm being Marcus to you. You're getting oh, me, you. you know? Okay. okay. And I think that's important because, like, I think about any of the moments where I've really appreciated, like, being in a concert venue or anything, and it's always those moments where the artist points at you. Or, like, you know mm. what I'm saying? That acknowledgement, oh, that okay. sense of, like, he knows I exist and that I fuck with him. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. And I think most people take that very importantly. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's huge. Uh one of the uh, one of the reasons why I feel like I enjoy photography so much is because it's so much fun that interaction of showing someone what they look like through yeah. your eyes through your lens, right? And and just that it's that it's that moment right where somebody points at you, yeah, and it's exactly. Like they see me, and then it's like that that conversation, and it's not even like a dialogue necessarily, but that conversation that just that acknowledgement, like you said that. Mm -hmm. like, I see you. Yeah, but definitely, yeah, man. Definitely. For that, yeah. You know, people are, you know, whether it's good or bad, it really depends on how you look at it. We're all very egotistical creatures, you know. We oh, all sure. like to be yeah. in the light and yeah. to be yeah. celebrated, yeah. you know. And I think, you know, Facts. giving giving people <laughs> that real face of yourself. A lot of people, I feel, walk around unconscious, mm. you know what I'm saying? Not okay. to say they don't have a conscious, just that they're not using it, okay. you know, because unless you're taking on something that takes more of yourself, like a real personal project or something, then you're going to work, you know, you have a girlfriend or whatever, you have your pets, you go home and that's cool, but there's nothing like breathing life into your soul, into your heart, into your mind. Interesting. You know, okay. like the world in its default is meant to keep you in a place where you can just be another gear, you know? And I feel like when you give people that little moment of like, yo, this is really me, that's what wakes up that consciousness. That's what gives them ideas. What do I want to speak to about this person? It gets those other gears turning. You okay. Know? Okay. Well, uh, let's take that opportunity then to uh, learn something in person. What's something that most people don't know about you? Hmm. Something that most people don't know about. And it doesn't even me. have to be like, uh, you know, related to your passion pursuit or anything. You know, do you have pets? You know, what's your family life like? You know, I'll say this. Okay. Something. Something people are going to have to get used to. I'm going to get a monkey. A I'm monkey? Get a, bro, I looked this shit up oh, the other day. I've okay. wanted a monkey. A monkey? And, you know, this goes back to, like, you know, your brain being hardwired when you're a little kid. Okay. I used to watch Zabumafu every a day. Zabumafu. Okay. Zabumafu as yeah, a little yeah. kid every day at my grandparents' house. And it was this show about, like, these two, like, zookeepers and a little fucking lemur. That they would hang out with oh, and the lemurs would talk so and shit. Cool, man. Exactly, bro. Yeah. I, it was like, it, that was my thing as a kid. And I never got away from it. And I saw an Instagram story. Somebody was like, oh, y'all fucked up showing me this. And it was like a Google thing. It was like, it is completely legal in the state of Nevada to own a monkey as a pet. And I was like, hmm, mm. how much a monkey, monkey cost? You know, like $1,000. That's it? Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, you know, and this might sound crazy, but, you know, monkeys be fucking people up. Oh, like yeah. Bad. Yeah. So my thought to myself is, as long as his head is like the same size as my hand, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just give it a, hey, cut it out. You know what I'm saying? Relax. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, okay, all right. You know? Right, right, <laughs> I don't right. want nothing that could like pull my head off like a little twist top. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so no. If you do get the monkey, I'm getting a pig. The monkey and the pig, bro. My monkey will ride your pig, bro. <laughs> That'd be kind of crazy. Get a little saddle for the pig and then the monkey. I mean, I think the production value on the shows just went up like a hundred. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, so what kind of monkey? Like a so you, size wise, you describe that, but like a helper monkey, I'm thinking spider like, monkey type of thing. I think know, they're called like pygmy monkeys or something like that. Monkey. The really okay. small ones, you know? Okay. Like I don't want something like little little dude hanging out on my shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Kick it. I'm playing the game, bro. Pass me the beer. You okay. know? Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 I don't know. I just I really have always thought since I was a kid it'd be cool to have a monkey. You know, I know I told my girlfriend the other night, I was like, you know, like we're getting closer to me being more successful with this shit. We're going to have a monkey. It's yeah. going to happen. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm okay. getting a fucking monkey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's, uh, yeah. Thanks for sharing that, man. Yeah. That's, uh, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah. It's going to have a monkey. Yeah. I'm going to have yeah. a monkey. Okay. Have a monkey. Also, I don't like heights. 
Okay. Yep. You know, hate heights. Yeah. It's terrified heights. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a monkey and uh, and and no cliff cliff jumping. Yeah. No cliff jumping. Okay. I'll live vicariously through the monkey. I'll throw him off a cliff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. Just kidding. Just yeah. Kidding. Yeah. Yeah. No throw. No throw. Well, not without. Not without a parachute. Or yeah. Like, or, 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 or one suit. Of the, yeah, Ooh, yeah. That'd be hard. So, oh, yeah, because you just saw that Batman movie. No mm-hmm. spoilers. No spoilers. But, but there's a wingsuit. Mm-hmm. They, did they, they did it well. They did it well. They did it well. He also... Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> that, shit, that scene fucked me up. Yeah. <laughs> no spoilers, though. No, no spoilers. spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers. Go, go see the Batman movie. See yeah. that shit. No yeah. doubt. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, man. Thanks, uh, thanks for sharing that. Let's... Um, uh, one thing I, I like to get in there, uh, what, what's your sign, right? Because you gotta, you gotta <laughs> let, you gotta let the fans know because you know your astrological self, right? Yes. So, so what's your sign? So my sign is Gemini. Gemini. And there's a little bonus. Now I don't know how much you're into numerology, but okay. my life pattern number is a six. Okay. So yeah, it, six is. And it's really funny because it actually leads. It goes. To, I'm Jewish. I'm okay. Jewish and Dominican. And, you know, when you're Jewish, you have a Jewish name as well. Mine being Tovi. And Tovi means the healing warrior. The which healing is, warrior. Yeah. That's which huge. So the sixth life path is about healing those around you and being oh, okay. that, like, pole of security for people around you. So I just thought it was really funny how I was like, damn, that's pretty spot on. That's that is. pretty cr- crazy coincidence, you know? <laughs> and, do you, and do you feel like uh, your music, do you, do you feel like that's, that's how, how you're meant to heal? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I think, you know, I have a couple different modes, but I, I think of myself almost like a conduit. You know, like mm. um, if you're feeling some sort of rage in you, mm. instead of going and beating the fuck out of somebody, put on one of my songs and that shit will exercise itself from you. You know, sadness, anything. You know, I feel like I, I do a pretty good job of allowing people to live vicariously through me emotionally. Nice. You know, I'm very, nice. I'm very honest on my music and it's a lot more, more honest stuff is coming, you know, and I don't know. I think that's what I appreciate and like the most about making music is being able to make people feel. Okay. You know. Okay. Being that conduit. Yeah. Sometimes conduit yeah. for healing. Definitely healing. Yeah. All all sorts of different things. That's great. Know? That's great. Yeah. We do a lot of that in this space. My my girl's a sound healer. So Very cool. yeah, we Very get cool. into all of that that's stuff. No know, know a little bit about you know what that dynamic looks like, and that's beautiful, man. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's a blessing. It's a blessing when you feel passionate about something, and it's uh, an additional blessing when you're able to carry that creative spirit that spark into the world and share it with others right share your art with yeah, others definitely. and and get them in a positive way so yeah thank you uh thank you for sharing that we talked about a lot of things today uh you dropped a lot of gems uh, on people like uh definitely <laughs> yeah man thank you, uh man. thank you for sharing all of that your journey is yeah. incredible um let's let's uh let's wrap it up with two things uh what's what's the biggest thing coming next for you uh, and then again, just uh, shout out to uh, to you and where people can find you. Like okay. where are the best places to find you. So what's coming up? Where can people find you? So coming soon, um, I'm gonna start dropping music like very frequently, like pretty consistently. And you know, I, I used to be very obsessive over okay, the Instagram post today, this tomorrow, blah blah blah. I'm gonna put music out there and put visuals out there and of course promote it. But I'm not gonna obsess myself over that because okay. I feel like that's where I lose. I lose the the energy. I feel like my, the energy of my music is different when I spend too much time focusing on the other shit. The not not the music. Exactly. Right, you know, the, right. it's all important, okay. but you can't let that become more important than the music itself. Gotcha. At least in my case, because that I love making music more than anything. You know. Right. Um, so yeah, a lot of new stuff coming. Miller and Zerby have been working on uh, essentially an album. Uh, it wasn't even really intentional, but we knocked out like four songs with Dawson. And we were like, so I guess we're starting the album process, right? Like, fuck it, let's do it. So we got that coming. Uh, we're dropping a new single right after the Strong Festival, Strong Music Festival, and we're going to perform it there for the first time. So if you want to see that, get your ticket, pop on out. You know what I'm saying? Lil Yachty, Trippy Red, biggest shows, biggest show of any of our careers, for sure. Nice. So uh, all that's coming. And, you know, follow me, Real Marco 4D, anywhere and everywhere, Marco 4D on all streaming services, and that's where you can find me. And the four is a uh, number four. Number four in the yeah. letter D. Marco yes, four D. Okay. Yep. That's great, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. I loved this, man. I love yeah, this. No, a lot. This is amazing. This is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. That's that. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Metal rap. Did you get it? Cool. Sweet, man. That was a great conversation. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Most definitely. It won't stop recording, though. Yeah, it's probably- <laughs>